Well, this is the day the Lord has made and has made well. It's a beautiful morning, and I wish you all a very, very good morning. morning. Great to see all of you folks this morning, and welcome to worship. I'm looking at a number of familiar faces, some unfamiliar faces, but certainly great to be with all of you folks in worship here in Corsica. Again, you have a beautiful community, and I welcome you to worship here at Grace Reformed in Corsica CRC. And again, uh, it's my pleasure to be with all of you this morning as we gather in worship. It's great again to see all of you folks and to uh, worship with you. I trust that you've been well. Uh, things look green here in Corsica, and they were green all the way down here. So I hope and pray that you have been getting some much, much needed moisture and your summer has been going well. Uh, as we begin our worship this morning, again, I thank you for the invite and the opportunity to worship with all of you uh, this morning. It's great, again, to see you and to be with all of you folks. I would ask that you would take a minute this morning, and maybe even this afternoon or this coming week, and remember many, many announcements that we have and many things happening here at church and in our communities and uh, many folks that kind of are in our prayer list and prayer concerns. And again, I would encourage you to um, take a look at your bulletin. There are many, many announcements um, happening and many things happening with our church and in our communities this summer. So again, please be aware of, of uh, many things that are happening in our church. Again, as we gather in worship, uh, the Luce family from Woolsey, we thank you for, for the invite to come here and worship with all of you folks. I always look forward to to coming here. I've been at Grace a number of times, and it's certainly, again, uh, my pleasure to be with all of you here uh, in worship. As we begin our worship this morning, I would ask that you would all rise as we begin with our call to worship this morning, again, as uh, found in our bulletin and our insert as well. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. God in heaven, as we gather this morning, and as we gather together as a Christian family and Christian brothers and sisters, we ask that you would be with us this morning. You would find our time together and our worship together pleasing. And God, as we gather this morning, and as we ask that you send the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts and minds, be with all of us this morning and be with many folks that can't uh, join us this morning and many folks that are joining online. God bless our time together and may your word and your message be pleasing to each and every one of us, and can we continue to learn and grow together. Again, Lord, may our time together be pleasing, and may we continue to grow in the love and faithfulness that Christ gives us. We pray this prayer in the powerful name of Christ, and all of God's people said, Amen.
Please be seated. Well, again, I wish to greet you all, and I wish to, to tell you all a very good morning. Uh, just a little bit of background on myself and my family. Uh, why is this guy in front of us this morning, for those of you that are wondering? And who is he? Um, so I began kind of a, a ministry uh, path, if you will, probably seven, eight years ago. I was leading a, a Bible study every Friday at the Beetle County Jail in Heron. And uh, one thing kind of led to another. I was asked to lead a, a worship service, and uh, I guess I did that again about seven, eight years ago, and I've been leading worship services in the Westington Presbyterian Church kind of kind of full-time in the winter months. I'm there every Sunday, kind of from October through May, and then every first Sunday in the summertime. But I kind of pinch hit and pinch run and coach third base and whatever in a number of different churches all around the area. Uh, I'm a superintendent and vice president for Asphalt Paving and Materials Company out of Huron. I've worked for Asphalt Paving and Materials Company since 1994. My wife, uh, Tammy, and I make our home west of Wolsey. We've lived there since 99, and uh, our children have all been raised and are being raised at the Wolsey Westington School. My wife has been a teacher at Wolsey Westington for 13 years, and she recently accepted a teaching position at the Huron uh, School District. Uh, Zachary, our oldest boy, graduated from Wolsey Westington in 19, and Macy graduated this past year. And our youngest, Tatum, is here this morning. She's going to be a sophomore. And Macy would be here with us as well. She was crowned the South Dakota Snow Queen in January. And this weekend, she's at the Wilmer Fest. I hope I get that right. Not sure if I got that right. My wife shaking her head. I might have got this kind of right. But anyway, uh, just a little background on uh, myself. And again, thanks to all of you. And God bless you all for... Um, inviting us here and I wish you all again a very very good morning and I know that uh, certainly it's our pleasure to be with you this morning as we move forward in in our worship this morning I would ask do we rise for this song do we rise okay please rise as you are able as we continue our worship build my life Build my life upon your 
love, it is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Great is your faithfulness. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Great is your faithfulness. Let's pray together our unison prayer of confession. Merciful God, you made us in your image with a mind to know you, a heart to love you, and a will to serve you. But our knowledge is imperfect, our love inconstant, our obedience incomplete. Day by day, we will to grow into your likeness. In your tender love, forgive us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our assurance of pardon this morning tells us, God the Creator brings you new life, forgives and redeems you. Take hold of this forgiveness and live your life in the spirit of Jesus. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me. Cause you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be? That you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true, it's my joy to honor you. 
Amazing love, oh, can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. now that our ushers would come forward for our morning's offering.
Please be seated. We're moving forward into our congregational prayer and our time of prayer this morning. Again, we lift up many folks in our hearts and minds that need our thoughts and need our prayers this morning. We continue to remember all of our leaders in our world, uh, many leaders in our country. We remember many folks that are facing wars and facing famine. Uh, continue to lift up many, many folks in our world, in our nation, and in our communities here at home as well. Please join me now as we go to our God in prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, God, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you thanks this morning that we can gather together on such a beautiful morning in a beautiful day that you have entrusted to each and every one of us, the opportunity to gather and to worship and to share. Lord, again, as we worship this morning, we ask that, again, the words that we hear and the message will be meaningful to us and instructive words that we can learn and live by. God, as we pray this morning, we again thank you for the beautiful world you have given and entrusted to each and every one of us. We thank you for the time that you have given in each and every one of our lives. And Lord, challenge us, continue to call our hearts, to continue to take advantage of the beautiful world that you have given us and the time that you have given each and every one of us. That we may continue to love and reach others. Continue to be good stewards as Christ calls us to be. Lord, as we pray this morning, again, we lift up many folks in our hearts and minds, many folks in our communities that need our thoughts and prayers. We lift up many folks that we name in our hearts and minds that are facing health afflictions and issues, awaiting test results, awaiting treatments. Continue to be with each and every one of them. Lord, continue to grant them guidance and patience and strength and healing. Lord, as we pray this morning, again, we lift up many, many leaders in our country and in our world. Continue to guide them and continue to turn their hearts to you. Lord, we pray for many people in our world that are facing war, famine, loss of life and bloodshed. We pray for an end to the war that we continue to wake up to every day. We pray for many folks in Ukraine, many folks being displaced all over our world. Lord, as we pray this morning, again, we pray for all of our military. We pray for military families. We pray for many of our police and firefighters, doctors and nurses, EMTs, folks that give tirelessly of their time to help others and to continue to make this world a better place. Lord, we thank you for the much-needed moisture that you have blessed our land with. We ask that you continue to look upon our fields and our lands here in the heartland with favorable moisture and favorable weather. And as we continue to journey into our summer months, God, continue to keep our children safe, continue to renew their hearts and minds as again we prepare for another school year. And God, as we pray this morning, we pray for this church and we pray for churches around our world that we will continue to be a light in dark places, continue to challenge this church to be the hands and feet of Christ and continue to reach others all across our world. Lord, as I pray this morning and as we all pray together, again, we thank you for the challenges that Jesus gives us each and every day of our lives, challenge to reach others and to love, and to offer hope and grace. Lord, again, be with us this morning. Be with many folks that can't be with us and many folks joining us online. Continue to keep us all safe and grant us health, happiness and wisdom and a desire to help and love others. 
Lord, again, be with the sick. Be with, be with the many folks around our world that need your caring and healing touch. Continue to, again, challenge each and every one of us to reach for others and to continue to grow in love. We pray this prayer in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, and we all pray together as one the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. You do a marvelous job with the music, and I, I don't know if it's appropriate to say it, but I'm going to say it. Um, you really have a vibrant worship service and a nice, nice uh, music. I know my wife and my kids always look forward to coming here for the just the music and the energy, so thank you, and God bless you. It, it certainly is nice. Um, folks, this morning, our scripture proclamation will come to us uh, from the New Testament gospel. I would like to read to you some words from John in the third chapter. Again, these are words 
kind of painting picture for Christ. Uh, words spoke by John the Baptist that uh, of our foretelling what's happening with Christ and words that, again, I think we can learn from. Again, I think that uh, our challenge as stewards of uh, Christ and of as Christian brothers and sisters, as we read Scripture, we have to learn from Scripture. Scripture has to be more than just words upon a page. I, I am a firm believer that we have to bring those words to life and continue to learn from them in our daily lives. So again, John in the third chapter, beginning with the 27th verse. To this John replied, A person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said I am not the Messiah, but am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits for him, and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine, and it is now complete. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth, as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. Again, words foretelling Christ and talking about our attitude in terms of what Christ should mean to us. Leaving a legacy. Leaving a legacy. Much can be learned from a legacy, as we all very much are aware of. Folks, this being our last Sunday in June, we may say, where did the summer go? Where has the summer been? Where has the time went? The last Sunday in June is upon us. And as most of you should know, that can mean only one thing. I'll say again, the last Sunday of June can only mean one thing. Not the 4th of July holiday is right around the corner. Close, but not quite that. That's not where I'm headed. Not the idea that school will be starting, and I said it. School will be starting in approximately six weeks. <laughs> kind of getting the stink eye from my wife and some kids. School will be starting in approximately six weeks. That's not where I'm headed either. Close. For me, and I want to impress upon this, and for most of you, the last week in June can certainly only mean one thing. Are you ready? I've kept you in suspense long enough. The last week in June, folks, can mean one thing. That in approximately five months from yep today, from now, approximately five months, I'm sure you guessed it, I'm sure it's right on the tip of your tongue, and here it comes, college basketball will be starting. <laughs> Nailed it, huh? You were right there with me, weren't you? College basketball, only five short months away. Let the madness begin. I love it. I absolutely love it. What does that have to do with leaving a legacy? We're going to get there. I'll guarantee you. March madness. The culmination of a full season of basketball. Folks, I'm a basketball fan. And Bruce and Kathy can attest to this. Maybe more than just a, a basketball fan, I'm a basketball junkie. I love college basketball, but maybe even more, I love high school basketball. I love watching young kids compete. I love seeing the fans. I love gathering in the winter when you can kind of make the argument, well, there's nothing better to do. I love going to basketball games. I love the sport of basketball. Thinking back when we talk about college basketball a few years ago, let's just go back in our minds a few years. An era of sorts came to an end. Here in our great state of South Dakota, as I stated, an era came to an end. If we go back a few years, as many of you know and hopefully will remember, 
Mike Dom from SDSU surpassed Eric Klein. I'm going back a few years ago, and I hope that's a name that maybe rattles around in your head a little bit. But Mike Dom from SDSU surpassed Eric Klein as the state's all-time leading collegiate scorer. That was kind of a sad day in my world. Kind of. Klein held the record for South Dakota in the collegiate level by scoring 3,062 points in his collegiate career here in South Dakota. A mark that was an all-time high here in the state of South Dakota for the neighborhood of 25 years. Quite incredible. Dom, as I stated, eclipsed Klein's record narrowly, just barely, by finishing with 3,067 points. And God bless him. Dom is well-deserving. Fine young man. Eric would be the first to congratulate him and shake his hand. I'll guarantee it. Both men, again, are fine stewards of the game. As I stated a moment ago, I love college basketball. I love the competitiveness. I love the watch athletes com compete. Eric Klein. Now, I know I'm below the interstate, and I know I'm kind of in Mike Miller country. So I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm behind enemy lines, but I'm, I'm down here where I got to be careful. Eric Klein. When he was playing, Aberdeen Central went on to Augustana and finished his career at Northern. And I grew up, I graduated high school in 92, and Eric's in 91. I went to school in Redfield, so I had a deep affection and a deep admiration for Eric Klein. I've, I've just never seen somebody work so hard at the game. In my opinion, and again, it's solely my opinion, we could get an arm wrestling contest about this after church. I think he's one of the best basketball players the state's ever seen. The things that he could do on a court, his shooting ability, how hard he worked without the basketball. I can barely put into words the way that he played the game, and unless you saw it, it's just almost hard to explain. I've told my kids countless times, He's the best player this state has ever seen. And as I stated, I'm below the interstate, so i got to be careful here. His ability to come off a screen. Be turning to the basket. Be able to find the hoop. And nail three-pointers. And nothing was out of his range. I can just almost sit here and go back in my mind. He worked so hard on the floor. As I stated, the argument can be made. He's one of the best the state has ever seen. But more importantly, I'd like to share a story with you. A handful of years ago, I had a chance to talk with Eric. Eric at the time was a superintendent at Aberdeen Christian High School. Wolsey Wessington, our high school teams, were playing at Aberdeen Christian that Saturday. Playing at the Civic Arena, downtown Aberdeen. The place where Eric Klein played his high school home games, as I stated, playing for Aberdeen Central. It's kind of funny, for as long as my kids can remember, I have always affectionately affectionately called the Aberdeen Civic Arena the house that Eric Klein built. And they must have really believed that because when we were going to Snow Queen events and different things at the Civic Arena, they'd always say, well, this is the place that Eric Klein built. My conversation that Saturday with Eric Klein started with a handshake. I thanked him for all of the memories that he gave me. I was kind of being selfish in that place as we stood in the Civic Arena. 
I raved and went on and on about his basketball talents and all the fine memories that I have watching him play the game. I pointed to one end of the court. I said, that's where I was sitting. I took my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, on a Saturday night date to watch Aberdeen Central play Heron. He scored 59 points, 40 in the second half. I said, that's where I was sitting. And he kept saying, isn't that something? I said, I remember watching you in 1994 when you played for Northern. You had 11 three-pointers. 52 points. Went on and on about different distinct memories. The whole time. Eric kept saying, isn't that something? Eric seemed very humble when we were talking about basketball. He spent the majority of the conversation maybe looking at the floor or looking, at the, looking away. Didn't want any pomp and circumstance. Didn't want anything to do really with talking about old basketball memories. But the real reason I wanted to talk to Eric that afternoon, and I mustered up the courage and I mustered up the strength to thank him. To thank him for being the role model that he was to me when I was younger. Now, he was a year older than me, but somebody that I definitely looked up to. His love for Jesus as a young man had a huge impact on me as a young person. And I wanted to share that thought with him now, almost through adult eyes. He, along with many others, helped me on my faith journey. And I wanted him to be aware of that. How much he meant to me for that. I struck a nerve with Eric. All of a sudden now our conversation was more eyeball to eyeball. And I could see the emotion in his face and the emotion in his eyes. He extended a hand to me. And we embraced he thanked me for the comments, as I stated, fighting back emotion. All of a sudden, there was a transformation, if you will. His humble, please, let's talk about anything else but basketball, mood, and look on his face, turned to a very serious, heartfelt, as I said, almost eyeball to eyeball, heart to heart. He simply said, and I quote, everything we do, everything we do has to in some way glorify God. Our legacy, he went on to say, has to be about Jesus and furthering his name to everyone. I'll never forget that conversation. I'll never forget those words. And folks, I'm going to forget a lot of things. I hope I never forget that. A little over a year later, Eric Klein was a featured speaker at the Aberdeen Community Prayer Breakfast. Quite an honor. And to quote John Papendick, a writer for the Aberdeen American News, he stated, like Eric's jump shot, his advice left people talking the next day. Eric in his speech talked about four things. Four things. Number one, there is value in pain. Number two, live life with gratitude. Number three, learn to renew your mind and watch your words. And number four, recognize the power of forgiveness and the dangers of bitter judgment. 
four pieces of advice from Eric Klein in a speech. If these words, if these four bits of advice, if you will, don't speak to leaving a legacy about Jesus, I guess I miss my mark. So let's focus on that word for a moment. Legacy. Just hearing the word in our minds, legacy. There's a lot of horsepower in that word, isn't there? Instantly, we focus. Maybe on folks that have left us. Maybe on folks that are still with us. That have left an impression upon us. Their grand achievements. Maybe your mind goes to your legacy. We're all human. What am I leaving behind? What about my legacy? Am I leaving the legacy behind that I want to be remembered for? Our mind can go a lot of different directions. So let's think about this for a moment. Our legacy. Oftentimes I like to speak about the footprint that we leave behind. I think as we all grow older and older, get a few more gray chin whiskers, we start to realize that it's more important what's happening behind us, the footprints that we're leaving behind, maybe than it is about the footprints in front of us. What are we doing to help our next generation? What are we doing to shape others coming behind us? How about our legacy? Because folks, whether we like it or not, we are all building a legacy to a point. One day at a time, our legacy is being built. With the word legacy at the forefront of our mind, and I hope your mind is going. That's the challenge. With the word legacy on the tip of your tongue. Try this on for a minute. See how it fits. I don't want to leave a legacy. I don't want to leave a legacy. I don't care if they remember me. Only Jesus. The words that I just spoke are lyrics. Lyrics to a Casting Crown song. But they're much more than that. I want them to be much more than that this morning. To each and every one of us. They are to a point a way of life. Almost our MO if you will. I don't care if they remember me. I don't want to leave a legacy. That thought to a point is kind of up and in our face, isn't it? Gosh, where'd that come from? Where's he headed now? Right up and in our face. We work so hard to build a legacy. We work so hard at our goals. Remember, it's all about me. What's going on here? It's about my legacy. It's about what I'm trying to do in life. I'm as guilty as the next. We work so hard to leave something behind. To work towards goals. So, we have, so that we have something to, to give others. Something to say, see, I got that. I got that. But our thoughts and questions. Again, I encourage us. Turn to what is my legacy? What's it geared toward? Is it geared toward me? What's it geared toward? Is it about remembering me and remembering all my accomplishments? My earthly possessions that I have? The wealth? The dynasty that I built? How hard I worked? 
My mind goes to Eric Klein's words. And I'll stay, say them again. Everything we do has to in some way glorify God. Our legacy has to be about Jesus. What would our world be like? Dreamscape with me for a moment. What would our world be like? What would our communities be like? What would our schools be like? Let's imagine it for a moment. All of a sudden, people don't care about what's in it for them. People put their pride aside. Don't think of themselves first. People. You, me. The folks we're pumping gas next to, the gas station, or buying groceries. The people we work with, the people we go to school with, our students, our families, our friends. Start living their lives for Jesus. Glorifying Him. Caring nothing about their own legacies. Can you picture that world a moment? Can you go there in your mind? Can you picture that workplace? Can you picture that school, that community? In reality, folks, as we all know, Sadly, that's not the world that we live in, is it? I probably don't have to tell you, do I? People of all walks of life, all across our world, they will push us out of the way in a New York minute to get ahead. Sadly, that's the world that we live in. They will push us out of the way for their own personal gain. For their own legacy, if you will. Personal gain, success, popularity, a chance to get ahead. It's all the same, isn't it? We owe it to Jesus to look inside our hearts. Remember John the Baptist's words. He must become greater and greater. I must become less and less. It can't be about me. It has to be about Him. That's what John the Baptist was telling us. So I encourage you this morning. Look inside your own heart. And as I stated a moment ago, I can be as guilty as the next. Let's ask ourselves. What drives me? What drives my legacy? Do we care too much about our own legacy? Are we getting wrapped up in that it's got to be all about me? Eric Klein, as I stated, said it best. Our legacy has to be about Jesus. Furthering his name to others. If that's our legacy, what more needs to be said? As I stated scripture this morning, and I encourage you to visit those words in your mind, a word spoke by John the Baptist. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. Wouldn't we all do ourselves a huge favor if we remembered those words? He must become greater and greater and I must become less. What can I do to further the name of Jesus? Is it going to be easy? No. Are we all set in our ways, set in our habits? Yep. We most certainly are. As I stated a moment ago, Mark Hall from Casting Crowns, says, I don't care if they remember me. I really don't care. I don't want to leave a legacy. Only Jesus. I don't want to leave a legacy because I don't care if they remember me. Christ came to this world 
to lay down his life. For each and every one of us, our legacy, he cared so deeply for our legacy that he laid down his life for us. Folks, I believe it's time to return the favor, so to speak. Because our legacy really doesn't matter. Only Jesus. Only Christ. Christ came so our legacy is forever in heaven. And thanks be to God. In closing this morning, I leave you with a video. I leave you with this song. Please watch the video. And listen to the words. 